quarantine your ass. That's right. We can quarantine your ass. And you don't think that's coming. You don't think FEMA camps are real. I know. You listen to Glenn Beck. He's got a nice haircut, huh? He's got a big smile. He's your everyman. Oh, he's, he's a funny guy, that Glenn Beck. No FEMA camps. Meanwhile, <laughs> now in New York City, they are telling homeless people who are staying in shelters, guess what? You're paying rent. That's right, folks. You're paying rent when you're homeless in the United States. You don't believe me? Well, soon enough, and, and I guarantee you that soon enough, it'll be like, oh, oh, you can't pl- pay your homeless bill? Well, then you can go to the FEMA camp, but you'll have to work there. So you'll just work for FEMA. New York charges rents for working homeless. The Bloomberg administration has quietly begun charging rent to homeless families who live in publicly run shelters but have income from jobs. The new policy is based on a 1997 state law that was not enforced until last week. See how they do it? They pass the legislation that goes hush, hush, hush. And then sometime down the road, they implement it. It's called incrementalization. It's already there. They just decide to act on it later on. And then, oh, I'm sorry, it's on the books. We're just going to take your scratch. Uh, Vanessa DaCosta, who earns $8.40 an hour as a cashier at Sbarro, $8.40 in New York City, you know what that's the equivalent to? That's that's the equivalent to about 3 bucks here. Okay, $8, if you're not making $15 an hour and you're living somewhere in New York City, I don't know where you're living. You're living on a park bench, Okay. I mean, even living outside of the city on $15 an hour is very difficult. My friends live there. I know how much. Try living in Queens. Try living in Brooklyn. You know, try living in the Bronx with that kind of money. It's garbage. $8.40. $8.40 an hour. They want this woman's money. She received a notice under her door several weeks ago informing her that she had to give 336 of her approximately $800 per month in wages to the Clinton Family Inn. A shelter in Hell's Kitchen. And believe me, folks, they don't call it Hell's Kitchen because it's sunshine and lollipops and good times, okay? They call it Hell's Kitchen because it is, if you've never been there, you know what? Go take a little, go take a little trip. That's where I want a vacation in Hell's Kitchen. I mean, give me a, I, unbelievable. Unbelievable. <sighs> it's not right, says Mrs. DeCosta, a single mother of a two year old. She has a two year old child who said she spends nearly a hundred dollars a week on child car. I pay my babysitter, I buy diapers, and I'm trying to save money so I can get out of here. I don't want to be in a shelter forever, but they want you in a shelter forever. They want you dependent on the government. They want you in a FEMA camp. They want you on social services. It puts you in the system. It makes you dependent on government. It allows government to grow and feed off the people. Oh, my God. City officials said the new rent requirement had been in the works since 2007, uh, a 2007 state audit that forced them to pay back $2.4 million in state housing aid that should have been covered by homeless families with income. Yeah, okay. Yeah, blame it on taxes. All right, I'm, I'm done with this. It, it, it's just, it's gross. It's beyond gross, man. I just, I can't even. I can't even. And you don't think that uh, there's going to be a control grid in the world? Because, again, this is bigger than the United States. This is bigger than America. This is bigger than Canada, bigger than Mexico, bigger than a North American Union, bigger than a European Union, bigger than a Eurasian Union. It is a new world order. And in Alberta, Canada, they are trying to pass Bill 42. Now, check this out. The Canadian province, best known for its libertarian uh, ideals, yeah, right, is moving toward a new law that would allow bar owners to collect, store, and trade personal information about their clients. Their clients are anybody that walks in, folks. But critics doubt whether it will be used for its intended purposes of fighting crime. If the Alberta legislator passes Bill 42, bars in the province would be able to gather and store the name, age, and photo of anyone who walks through the door. Management could then share this information with other bar owners and the police. Really? Other bar owners and the police or anybody else they wanted to. They want to sell off private information to a corporation somewhere. I'm sure they'd do it if they paid enough money. But here's the real kicker. Uh, Let's see. Rob Anderson, uh, the member of the Legislative Assembly for Ardry Chestmester. I I totally screwed that name up, but hey, whatever. Introduced the bill, which would... Allow, here we go. 
It will allow police to enter bars and remove anyone they think is a criminal or gang member without the bar owner's permission. So in other words, they can go into any establishment, say, you, and gone. Now, they don't have to have probable cause. The person doesn't really have to be a criminal or a gang member. But this allows police to literally go in and take anybody they want out. I mean, give me a break. The bill is designed to keep gang members in the bars. The majority of law-abiding patrons won't be affected. See, if you're not doing anything wrong, Alex, what do you have to worry about? But by the way, this is global. I remember about five years ago in England, they would drive up. You can uh, search engine this. And they would pull up with mobile body scanners for weapons and also biometrically scan their bodies. And now most bars in London make you thumbprint and face scan to get into the bar. And, and then they have Miami bars and others and some in Europe where you've got to take a chip to get in the bar. Yeah, it's very trendy. It's very trendy, and they got all basically hookers that in the back. back. In like 2003, the Baja Club. I remember you. Yeah, exactly. Were well, oh, and he just happened to be an ex-marine. Oh, he was just ex-military, starting a biometric program for trendies at a bar. No, it was it was implantable chips, but that isn't that wasn't the hooker joint. There were some others in Europe, you know, with like uh, uh, topless bars mm -hmm. doing the same thing. But yeah, we had him on the show. We had the CEO on. He said, "You will be chipped. You will submit," and then he started laughing. So this is all a big joke to them, but how dare us go on YouTube and dominate? Folks, we are dominating. That's why they're striking back. This means we're really having an effect, and it's exponential. Burmese, it isn't hype. I'm, I'm at the Texas coast where I'm not on a radio station or anything, and there's an InfoWars sticker on the, on the thing without me even looking. You know, 300 yards away from the little uh, hotel condos on the beach. Everybody behind the desk is a fan now. Uh, bef days before that, I'm at a campsite, and the people that give me the you know the campsite uh, 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 permit, they're all fans. And I go, where did you hear? YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. That is where the fight is, folks. Upload this right now to hundreds of channels. They can't stop us. They can't stop us all. They're showing us the censors they are. But if we give in to their censorship, then they win and they can move forward. We have to openly show everybody the censors that they are but yes uh, this bar situation all of it thumb scanners to get school lunches thumb scanners to get library books fight these bastards i am so upset in this five minutes i think i'm just gonna rant about youtube and how they are really just some of the most disgusting vile creatures out there you know when it started I was a little hesitant to get on the YouTube bandwagon. I still hadn't had a MySpace page. But people were sending me these clips. Before this, it was all WMVs that were embedded. I mean, even the old school Prison Planet and InfoWars would have to embed WMVs. And again, this is very heavy on traffic. Um, when I say that, it's bandwidth intense. Okay, But when you have it as a, just a link, and most of the bandwidth is going through a third party that is gen generating revenue, because of all the ad space they were able to sell, because YouTube is literally in the top ten in the world. You know, I mean, they, it's one of the most powerful sites out there in the world. The same, Google, Google and Yahoo, I think, are one and two. And you, Yahoo is in the top ten. I'm pretty sure so is MySpace and Facebook. Now think about the power of that in the world. The Internet is bigger than television at this point. Okay, Most people in their you know, teens, 20s and 30s don't even watch that much television anymore it's all based off the internet and then they get on their xbox live and they're in in that little world i mean literally television now is really for you know older people who are watching gray's anatomy or house i, I mean how many how many youngsters do you see watching that how many of your kids are watching that no they're not you know they, they'd rather be playing video games or rather be surfing the internet and, you know, that's why, you know, we did this story last summer, but they started banning the names of Xbox accounts. Oh, if your Xbox account suggests that 9-11 might be an inside job, you're banned. And, and that's it. They, they just, your account's over with. Now they're doing the same thing on YouTube. They don't like us tapping into the new technology. They don't like it that we're ahead of the curve. They don't like it that a video of mine that's a minute and 47 seconds long gets 6,000 views in a day. And then starts to go viral everywhere, especially when it doesn't take the establishment mainstream position. How dare it? How dare you think outside of the box? How dare you call out a criminal for what he is, a criminal? You know, call like you see it. I'm sick of all this, oh, you need to be really careful, Jason. Some of the things you say aren't true. Everything I talk about 
on this program is backed up by mainline sources. Now, am I going to get everything right 110% of the time? No, no one does. Nobody. It's impossible. We're human beings. We're going to make mistakes. But I know I didn't make any copyright mistakes. And I know that I didn't commit any kind of crimes by the things that I said. I have free speech. I have the Constitution. I have the Bill of Rights. I don't care what they tell me. And they don't like it when I say, hey, by the way, this bill is a bad idea in Alberta, Canada. And, you know, I have Canadian listeners. In fact, I get tons of calls from Canada. I would say outside of the United States, Canada is my biggest listening audience, obviously. And I get at least two or three calls from Canada.